Welcome to Grace Community Church Wednesday night service. Let me go ahead and pray for us, and we'll get right into tonight's message. Father, just thank you for the, the message that you've laid on my heart the last couple of weeks. Lord, I just pray that you would uh, help me to deliver it tonight. And I just pray, Lord, that you would open hearts and minds to receive it, you know, what it is you have to say to us, God. And I pray that you'll help us to not only hear it, but to, to remember it, Lord, and meditate on it and actually apply it to our lives and make the changes that we need to make to, to follow you, Lord, and become the, the men and women of God that you've called us to be. And we'll give you the glory for that. And it's in Jesus' name I do pray. Amen. But uh, if you were here a few weeks ago, you know, we talked about a couple of lists that we found in the Bible that tell us things that keep us, you know, Paul says that will keep us out of the kingdom of God. And our main verse a couple of weeks ago was in 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 13 and verse 5. You know, Paul says we need to examine ourselves. You know, whether our faith is genuine or not. And that verse says, examine yourselves, whether you be in the faith, and prove your own selves. Know you not your own selves, how that Jesus Christ is in you, except you be reprobates. And uh, I shared that definition for the word reprobate with you, and that means, you know, to be cast out or uh, disqualified or unaccepted. And uh, that's the reason I shared those with you. I don't want anybody to be cast out or unaccepted and uh, I think we really need to do that and examine our, our lives and if there's anything in there that's going to keep us from following God we should really you know get those things out of our lives so you know that's where we were a couple of weeks ago we asked ourselves you know do I really have a relationship with Jesus am I really living a life that's surrendered to him you know am I really in a right standing with God or do I just go to church and uh, I think those are real questions. You know, am I just trying to make everybody think that I'm living a godly life? And my relationship with God's where it needs to be. And, you know, I'm in fellowship with Jesus. Or am I just deceiving everybody and myself by just going through the motions? Uh, if you didn't get to see that message, I'll tell you where those lists are. I'm not going to go over them again because we've already went over them. But the first one is in... 1 Corinthians chapter 6, it's verses 9 through 10. And the second one is in Galatians chapter 5, verses 19 through 21. So if you weren't here for that message, I would urge you to go look those up. And uh, if you recognize any of those things in your life, you know, take them to God. He'll help you deal with them. <clears throat> and we talked about last time that Paul didn't give us those lists to condemn us or judge us. He was giving us those lists to warn us, you know, about things that don't need to be in our lives if we're going to follow God, to help us out. Because both of those lists end in the same way. And then at the end of both of those lists, it says, those that do these things will not inherit the kingdom of God. And, you know, I want to share this with you too. And I shared it with you last time that if you have done any of those things or all the things on those lists, that don't mean you're condemned or disqualified, you know, like it says, except you be reprobates. That's not what Paul is saying. He's saying he's just sharing those with us so we can recognize those things in our life and know that those are things we need to get out of our lives. Uh, now, I did share this verse with you last time, and I want to share it with you again just to show you that. Paul's not giving us those lists to condemn us. In 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 11, this is right after the first list. It says, And such were some of you, but you are washed, but you are sanctified, and you are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. So, you know, if you're like me, just about everything on those lists was in my life. But it, that don't disqualify us. When we come to Christ, he'll wash us and sanctify us and justify us uh, by the Holy Spirit. So he wasn't saying if you've ever done any of those things that you're out. He's saying if you do recognize these things in your life, uh, all you got to do is bring them to God and confess them and allow him to wash you and remove those things from your life. Uh, it's only when, you know, God does reveal those things 
to us in our lives, and we refuse to get rid of them. And, uh, you know, we continue to live in disobedience after we know those things are not right. That's where condemnation comes in. You know, that's where we are condemning ourselves. And I tell you all the time that God is not out to condemn anybody. If we're condemned, you know, we're doing it to ourselves. And uh, I want to share these verses with you, too. Uh, we went over these about four weeks ago, I think it is. But I want to go over them again. And if this is your first time watching or if you're new in your faith, I want you to pay attention to these verses because I can't stress to you enough that God is not out to condemn us. God sent Jesus to save us from our sin, not to find us guilty and condemn us for our sin. So if this is your first time watching or if you're new in the faith, I want you to pay attention to these. You know, we quote these verses all the time, and sometimes I think we forget that you know, this is Jesus talking to us. These are, in, these are in red letters in the Bible. So this is Jesus talking about himself. Uh, I'm going to read, we'll read some more verses later on in the message, but right now I'm going to read John 3, verse 16 through 19. You know, these, that's probably the most famous verse in the world. It says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. And he that believes on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. So those verses are full of the word condemnation, but none of the none of that condemnation comes from God. None of it comes from Jesus. It all comes from our decision not to obey God. It comes from ourselves. You know, like again in verse 19, it says, This is the condemnation that men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. And uh you know, it's a sad thing, but that's the way most of the world is. They, they love the darkness more than the light. They're out to please themselves instead of uh, living lives that are obedient to God. And, uh, you know, to me, that's what, this is what that looks like. You know, if you did your homework and you did go through those lists that we talked about last time, and you said, yeah, I did my homework and I read those lists, and, but I don't care what the list said. You know, this is my house, and I'm going to live the way I want to. I'm not hurting anybody. It's nobody's business but mine, what I do in my own home. Uh, you know, that, any way you put it, that's just rebellion against God, to know what his word says and just refuse to obey it, to refuse to make the change in our life in order to live obedient to God. That is self-condemnation. Uh, we just read where Jesus said he didn't come to condemn anybody. But if we think we can come to church and be godly at church and then just go home and live any way we want to at home, then we're just deceiving ourselves. Uh, in Psalm chapter 24 and verse 1, it says, The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. You know, that takes care of everything in the world actually belongs to God. Everything in it and everybody in it. And uh, that includes your house. That includes your home. Uh, Josh's sermon a couple of weeks ago, he put it really well. Uh, he was talking about where Jesus says in John 10 and verse 27, he said, The sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And that means uh, they hear my voice and they obey what I say. But it doesn't do us any good to read God's word and then put it down and think to ourselves, well, that that applies to everybody but me. That that don't apply to me. That applies to all of us. You know, we talk about a lot about the kingdom of God. If you belong to Jesus, your house should be in the kingdom of God. You know, the kingdom is anywhere that the king has authority. So that's pretty much the question we've been asking a couple of for the last couple 
of times we've met here. You know, does God have authority in your life, in every area of your life, not just at church or in small groups, but, you know, at home, at work? You know, we just read there in Psalm 24 and verse 1 that the whole earth, the whole world, and everybody and everything in it belongs to God, and it does. But it's sad to say, but not everything in the world is in the kingdom of God. You know, inside of our homes can be completely out of the kingdom of God. I remember I had a, a conversation with Derek a couple of weeks ago. We were driving home from KOZ, and, uh, you know, we were talking about how Jesus is our king. And I love to think about Jesus as my king. I, you know, he is my savior, but after he's my savior and he saved me from my sin and I start living for him, uh, He's my king. As long as I'm living in obedience to him and he is my king, then I'm inside his kingdom. And it's his responsibility to protect me. It's his responsibility to provide for me and to care for me. But, you know, if I get to the place where I don't like the king's rules and regulations and I decide to step outside the kingdom so that I can do things that are not allowed in the kingdom, then I'll remove myself from his protection and his provision. You know, I've chosen myself to go outside the kingdom and fend for myself. You know, whether that, you know, you may be living for him at home, but you may not be living for him at work. <clears throat> Wherever we are, we should be in the kingdom of God at all times. Uh, I don't know how many of y'all were here a couple of weeks ago, but in that same sermon, Josh also did a demonstration a couple of weeks ago about a sheep, you know, as long as it's in the middle of the flock and it's surrounded and the shepherd protects him and the other sheep around him protect him too. <clears throat> and the shepherd leads them <clears throat> wherever they go. And that's the same with the kingdom. As long as we're, you know, living like Jesus is our king and we're living obedient to the kingdom rules, then we're under his protection. But when we take it upon ourselves to step outside the kingdom, then we're on our own. So that's what I want to talk about for a few minutes tonight. Uh, for the last couple of weeks, I've been doing a, a little study on the kingdom of God. And I won't share all of it with you because it would probably bore a lot of you to death, but I will share some of it with you. I think sometimes we take for granted or just don't fully realize what God has done for us. You know, God's kingdom has always been. It's eternal. You know, before the earth, before we were created, before any of that, God's kingdom was already there. It's always been there. And it will always be there. But God created a space and time here on earth to give us the opportunity to enter his kingdom and to be with him forever. You know, he created a door or a gate through Jesus Christ so we would have a way to enter the kingdom of God. You know, Josh talked about some of that last week. He was talking about Jesus is the gate. You know, he is the only way to enter into the kingdom of God. I mean, think about that. You know, here's eternity. It's just going on forever and ever in both directions. And then, you know, sin entered the picture first in heaven and God kicked Satan out of heaven and down to earth and then he created us and we were on the earth and mankind sinned so God said stop you know I'm going to make a way for them to get into the kingdom of heaven you know mankind has sinned they've fallen so he puts into motion his plan of redemption so he created time just for us just for the reason and during our time here we have the opportunity to get saved and uh, go into God's kingdom. And then one day that time will end and eternity will keep going and God's kingdom will keep going. But each of us has the opportunity during our brief little window here on earth to either believe in Jesus and surrender to him and make him our Lord and enter into eternal life or we can reject him while we're here and condemn ourselves to eternity without God. And at the end of our short time here, and it is a short time, I mean, if you're younger, you think you've got all this time in front of you. 
but the older you get, you realize, you know, life is short. It's really short. Even if you live to be 100 years old, you know, our brief time here is nothing compared to eternity. And the sooner we realize that our whole purpose while we're here is to go the right way and to make the right decision so we can spend eternity with God, the better off we'll be. You know, at the end of our time here, which is short, like I just said, that's all that really matters. Have I surrendered to Jesus, truly surrendered to him, or have I not? You know, it's a simple life or death decision because when Jesus comes back or our life ends here on this earth, when our window in time that we just talked about, when that's over, that decision is final and the door is shut and we've either chosen life or death. You know, there's nothing on this earth that we can experience that's worth losing our eternal life over. And Satan tries to deceive us and make everything else look so important. You know, I see people all the time, they waste their entire lives just trying to please themselves, trying to, you know, money or whatever it is. You know, it could be drugs or alcohol or houses or land or any kind of things. All those things are not going to be here when this earth is gone. It's not going to be here, you know, when we die. When our time here is over, we can't take any of those things with us. So none of that stuff is worth our eternal life with God. And, uh, you know, people, they spend their entire existence looking for those things. And uh, they're not going to be here in the next life. So our whole focus should be, am I going to be in the kingdom or not? And while we're here, we can live in the kingdom while we're here. You know, we read... John three sixteen through 19 earlier, and uh, I don't know about y'all, but I think most people, you know, we think of Jesus is preaching that to a great multitude of people, but he wasn't. That's, that's part of a conversation that he had with one man. Uh, that was a conversation that he had with Nicodemus. Nicodemus was a, a religious ruler, if you don't know who he was, he was actually a Pharisee, but he was one of the main Pharisees back then. And he wanted to meet with Jesus privately because he was afraid of what the church would think about him if they thought he believed in Jesus. But he did believe in Jesus, and he wanted to, to talk to him. But the conversation started out with Nicodemus telling Jesus that he believed he was from God. And the, it actually says he believed, but he actually said we believe. He was talking about there were other Pharisees too that believed. And uh, I'll just share those verses with you instead of trying to explain it to you. But that whole thing in John 3 is just a conversation that he had with Nicodemus. Uh, in verses 1 through 3, it says, There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. And the same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from God, for no man can do these miracles that you do except God be with him. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. So that whole conversation that he had with Nicodemus, that includes John 3.16, uh, is about you can't enter the kingdom of God unless you we just read there in verse 3. And, uh, and the rest of the conversation is just Jesus explaining to him the only way you can be born again is through faith in me, through faith in Jesus, surrendering your life to him and making him your king and being obedient to him. Uh, part of the definition of the kingdom of God is talking about our new nature. You know, we read it all the time in 2 Corinthians 5.17 that any man that's in Christ becomes a new creature. He Old things are passed away. He becomes a new creation. It's called spiritual birth. We call it being born again. And Jesus says, if you haven't done that, you know, if you haven't truly surrendered yourself to him, then you will not enter the kingdom of heaven. And, uh, you know, I tell you almost every week, these things are not easy to preach, but I 
I want you to know the truth. I don't want you just coming to church and thinking you're okay because of good attendance. You know, it says that it's made our new spiritual birth. Uh, part of the definition that I looked up for the kingdom of God, it says that it's made manifest or it's made evident by obedience. That's our proof that we're born again. You know, we obey God. We actually obey what his word says. Uh, if you have to take a break sometimes and step outside of the kingdom or, you know, get away from everybody so you don't have to act godly all the time, so you can just be yourself. If you have to force yourself to be godly or appear godly around other people, uh, then you're probably not surrendered. You know, if you have to take a deep breath and run into church and try to be as godly as you can the whole time you're there, and then when it's over, go outside and, oh, you know, relax and be yourself, your real self, then chances are you're not really surrendered to God. So the rest of the night's message is going to be about, is the shepherd leading you wherever you go? You know, are you living under the authority of a king? Or are you still making all the decisions based on your own understanding and your own desires and what the world says is okay for us to do? You know, I tell you all the time, we can't trust the world. We have to, we have to trust what God's word says. Uh, you know, Josh also talked a couple of weeks ago about the difference between abundant life here on earth and eternal life. You know, we're trying to get those kind of mixed up sometimes. The abundant life while we're here on earth is God in us, the Holy Spirit living inside of us, leading us and guiding us. While we're here, God is with us. You know, that's what Emmanuel means, He's God with us. But when our time here is done and we are in the kingdom of heaven, then we will be with God. But the kingdom of God is here and there. It's, it should be in both places. Here we're in the kingdom of God by allowing the Holy Spirit to rule and reign in our hearts and being obedient to Him and being obedient to His Word and not being conformed to the world. Uh, not a whole lot has changed since Paul wrote those lists. You know, he had a lot to deal with in the early church and the Things are pretty much still the same today. You know, people would come and profess their faith in Jesus, and then they would go led astray by the customs of the world. You know, when they got back out into the population, back out into just everyday living because of peer pressure and what other people would think, uh, just like Nicodemus wouldn't be seen with Jesus during the daytime. He had to be seen with him or go meet him at night. And I think that's the way a lot of us are. It's easy to be godly when we're at church but when we get out and go through our everyday lives during the week you know when we're going to walmart or the grocery store or, or wherever we go you know we've got to choose to be obedient to god then too we can't be ashamed of the gospel of jesus christ jesus himself said you know if you deny me before men i'll deny you before my father and uh, paul brings that up i want to share these verses with you he brings it up a couple of times in the book of Galatians, and that's what he's talking about, uh, is people, they'll profess Christ, but when they get around non-believers, then they change the way they act. And in Galatians 3, verse 1, he says, O foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you that you should not obey the truth, before whose eyes Jesus Christ has been evidently set forth and crucified among you? He's telling him, you know, why are you going back to your old ways? You sit there and watched him be crucified. He died for you. And uh, you're still more worried about what people think than you are what God says. That you should not obey the truth. You know, this world don't want you to obey the truth. It's designed to keep you from obeying the truth. And he talks about it again in Galatians chapter 5, verses 7 through 9. He said, you did run well. And I think this is how a lot of us start out. You know, you start off good when you first get saved or you first, you know, come to Christ. We're on fire for God. And then we start hanging around people in our everyday life and we get that slow fade going. And that's what he's talking about here. He said, you did run well. Who did hinder you that you should not obey the truth? They start slipping and, you know, start 
doing little bits of disobedience here and there again, and before you know it, you don't even go to church anymore. And he's telling them, this persuasion comes not of him that calls you. Those kind of friends are not from God. They're leading you away from God. And uh, I love this verse. It says a little leaven leavens the whole lump. When we start compromising, when we start letting little things into our life, then it's, it's not going to be long. Then those things, they just take over. And uh, you'll start being more disobedient than you are obedient. And uh, <clears throat> all the advice that we get from this world will lead you away from God. That's what he's talking about back in verse 8. That this kind of advice or persuasion, you know, it don't come from God. That's why our relationship with God has to start at home. We have to get the truth inside of us so we'll be able to see it when we're out in the world. We can't depend on this world to show us what's right. Only God's Word can do that. Uh, Proverbs 19 and verse 27 says the same thing. It says, Cease, my son, to hear the instruction that causes to err from the words of knowledge. You know, quit taking advice that leads you away from God. You know, if you're struggling in your marriage, don't ask unbelievers what I should do about my marriage. They're going to tell you get a divorce. You know, I wouldn't take that from him. I wouldn't take that from her. That's not godly advice. You know, God's word says he hates divorce. Uh, Jesus said the only reason Moses gave you a, a right for divorcement is because you had hardened hearts and you wouldn't listen to him. Uh, we have to get our advice from God's word. You know, I keep stressing we need to learn God's word and what it says for ourselves. Uh, Josh brought this up a couple of weeks ago, and that's the point I'm trying to make tonight too. In First John chapter 2, verse 18, it says, Little children, it is the last time, and as you have heard, that Antichrist shall come. Even now are there many Antichrists, whereby we know that it is the last time. There are Antichrists everywhere. All you got to do is turn your TV on for five minutes. You know, every commercial, every TV show, about everything this world throws at you, is it leads you away from God. It teaches you that everything God's Word said is not okay, is okay. And it's socially acceptable. It's perfectly all right for you to do that. And it's not. You know, you can't trust what you hear from the modern-day church either. You know, you can turn all kinds of preaching on. There's churches and pastors all over the world that are perverting the Word of God. They're not preaching truth. That's why, it's, that's why we need to be learning it ourselves. You know, they're, especially the Methodist church, they're... they're allowing openly gay people to be pastors now. They're allowing same-sex marriage in the church. And not just that. I mean, they're allowing a lot of things in the church that God's Word plainly says uh, shouldn't be there. The only thing we can depend on is the Word of God. And, uh, you know, I don't care what kind of translation of the Bible you have. The Holy Spirit can talk to you through any of them. But, uh, when I'm studying, when I'm actually trying to see what the root of a word is, it always leads me back to the King James. But I'm not one of those guys that say, if you're reading anything else, that's not from God. You know, you can read any translation you want. Like I said, the Holy Spirit will speak to you if you're seeking Him. But if you want to find the root words or the root meanings of these words, then you'll look them up in there and you will find them. So we can't depend on the world. The only thing we can depend on is the Word of God. And that's the only way you're going to know if you're being deceived, if you know the truth yourself. Like I said, these kind of messages are, are not easy to preach, but I want you to know the truth because you can't obey what you don't know. But once you do know it, you are held accountable for it. And I, I do hear a lot of people saying they can't understand the Bible or they don't know where to start reading the Bible. So I want to talk about that for a few minutes tonight, too. You know, nobody, the Bible says, nobody can understand the Word of God without the Spirit of God. And that starts with the relationship with Jesus. You know, it, it don't start with understanding the Scriptures. It starts with surrendering your will to Him and asking Him to come into your heart and be your Lord then the Holy Spirit will give you understanding of the Scriptures. 
You know, too many times we try to put the cart before the horse. We want to understand and then decide whether or not we want to surrender to God. It don't work that way. Uh, Paul says in this verse we're fixing to look at that we can't understand the scriptures until we surrender. In 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 14, it says, But the natural man, or us before we get saved, the natural man receives not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him, and neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. And if we back up just a little bit in 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and read verses 11 and 12, it says, For what man knows the things of a man, save the spirit of a man which is in him? Even so the things of God knoweth no man but the spirit of God. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. So what Paul is saying there is we can't trust our own understanding. You know, once we surrender to Jesus, then he gives us the Holy Spirit. Then the scriptures make sense to us. Then we can get the understanding that we need from them. So it's through the Holy Spirit that we're able to understand God's word, not our own understanding. You don't understand scriptures because you're smart. If, if that was the case, I would never understand the Bible. But the Holy Spirit reveals things to you. You know, Paul goes on to say, and this is an example of what I'm talking about in 2 Corinthians, that if we're looking for the gospel from the world, that the God of this world, or Satan, he blinds us so that we can't find it. And uh, this also will tell you that it's in believing first and receiving the Holy Spirit, and then we understand the scriptures. But in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 3 and 4, it says, If our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world, or Satan, has blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. But we're only blinded until we believe. Uh, once we believe and we come to him in faith and truly surrender to him, it says in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 6, that God turns the light on for us. It says, For God, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, has shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. So when we come to Christ in faith and we surrender to him, God commands his light to shine in our hearts, and he gives us the knowledge that we're looking for. You know, we don't understand the Bible. We don't understand Scripture because we're trying to figure it out before we surrender to him. And, uh, you know, that's backwards. In Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 and 9, it says, By grace are you saved through faith. So we have to come to Jesus in faith and believe he is who he says he is and surrender ourselves to him. And that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. So we're not saved by knowledge. You know, you can read your Bible all day long, and that don't save you. We're saved by faith and by surrendering to Jesus. You know, we don't receive the Holy Spirit by any other way than faith in Christ. So if you're struggling with God's Word, it says, you know, that it starts with believing in Jesus through faith. I love this verse, uh, this verse in Romans chapter 10 and verse 17. It says, then faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. So when you hear the word of God being preached, uh, you know, just like tonight, if you're tuning in online and watching, when you hear the gospel being preached that Jesus came and died for your sins and rose from the dead the third day, then you have a choice uh, whether to believe it and call out to God in faith and surrender to him and ask him to come into your heart or not. You also have the choice to reject it. You know, it's one thing to hear God's word, and it's a whole other thing to hear it and surrender to it and be obedient to it and start living our lives for him. Uh, DJ did a demonstration in Celebrate Recovery 
it's probably been a couple of months ago, I guess. And he was talking about, you know, if you're walking along and somebody yells stop at you and you stop, then you heard what they said and you only and you listened to what they said. But if you're walking along and somebody says stop and you just you heard what they said, but you just keep going, then you just heard it. You didn't listen to it. And that's what a lot of people do. They hear the gospel, but they don't listen to it. They don't actually stop and surrender their lives. They have knowledge of it, but knowledge in itself don't save anybody. We have to be obedient to it. <clears throat> and that just really breaks my heart because there's so many people trying to understand God and understand God's Word without the without the Holy Spirit. And the Bible itself even tells you that you can't understand it without the Holy Spirit. You know, we just read you can't understand it without the Holy Spirit. Uh, I think we covered this the last time too in Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 6. It says, without faith, and there it is again, it starts with faith. It is impossible to please Him. For he that comes to God must believe. It starts with faith and belief that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So are you really seeking him? You know, it amazes me how many people want and need God in their lives so bad, you know, that, that they can't stand it. But they don't read God's word at all. You know, I won't ask you this. I think I did this last time. But if I did ask everybody, you know, how many of you, Bible, how many of you have read your Bible this week, you know, every day this week or any at all this week. You know, I would like to think everybody would raise their hand. But the truth is, most people don't. Most people just come to church and they hear what the preacher has to say and they don't, they're not getting anything inside themselves at home. Uh, you know, every week I try to give you some homework and our homework this week is really simple. You know, this verse says that without faith, it's impossible to please God and that we have to believe that he is. If you're wanting and needing God in your life, if you need God's help in your life, if you need his protection, and his provision and all the things that God has to offer, they're free. But we have to seek him and we have to live our lives in obedience to him and stay inside the kingdom like we've been talking about. <clears throat> so if you're our homework this week is really simple if you're not reading your Bible then uh, start tomorrow out differently you know come to God in faith and uh, if you haven't truly surrendered to him surrender your will to him and invite him into your heart as Lord and not just Savior and ask you to guide or ask him to guide you with his Holy Spirit and he will and uh, you're not going to understand everything right away nobody does but start out and just obey what you know and he'll show you the next step you know I challenge you to start reading a proverb a day I mean that is super easy everybody could do that there's 31 chapters in proverbs and uh, that works out to where you can read one just about every day of the month so if you haven't been doing that I would challenge you to do that start tomorrow start doing things differently i mean if you don't make any changes at all then you can't expect any change at all change comes with change so starting tomorrow you know try to put some effort into to reading god's word and if you have a hard time you don't know where to go first a good place to start is in matthew you know just start read the sermon on the mount that's in uh, chapters 5 through 7 and it's full of instructions simple stuff just like in Proverbs things that you can understand things that you can obey and like I said you know just obey what you understand and God will show you the next thing he'll reveal something else to you and give you understanding of it and uh, then you can obey that too that's how you build a relationship with God but the reason I'd uh, encourage you to start in proverbs is because it that's what it does it helps you get wisdom 
you know, Proverbs 1 is an explanation of itself. It says these Proverbs are here to help you understand. That's what it says in the uh, in Proverbs 1 and verse 7, it says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. To me, that's saying, you know, when you come to God in faith and you surrender your life to Him, then He'll give you, that's fear of the Lord, and He'll give you the Holy Spirit and help you understand Scripture. Proverbs 1, 23 says, Turn at my reproof. That means when He reveals something in your life that shouldn't be there, then say, Okay, Lord, we'll do it your way. And you change direction. You do it His way. And he says, and then I will pour out my spirit unto you, and I will make known my words unto you. Or, you know, he'll give you understanding of what you're reading. So that's my challenge to you this week. If you're not reading God's word, start tomorrow. You know, we all have to start somewhere. And uh, like I said, if we're going to be Christ followers and we're going to be obedient to him, then we have to know what he said. Like I said earlier, you can't obey what you don't know. And uh, if you didn't catch that a minute ago, chapters 5 through 7 in Matthew, that's where the Sermon on the Mount is. And uh, that'll keep you busy for quite a while. You know, not just reading it, but going through it and applying it to your life. You know, it says, love your enemies. Pray for your enemies. It, it gives you step-by-step -step instruction on things that you can add into your daily life. So tonight's message, in a nutshell, is this. You know, if you really want the power of God in your life and the protection and the provision and the guidance of God in your life, open your home to him, you know. Place your home in the kingdom of God through obedience, and you you will be under the king, and the king will take care of you. Invite God into your life to be your leader and your king and your lord and not just your savior. And uh, I always tell you too, be willing to let go of anything God reveals to you that shouldn't be there. And if you're still having trouble trying to find something to read in the Bible, you know, you can Google whatever you're going through. If you're going through a hard time, whatever that is for you, just get on Google and say, where in the Bible does it say, you know, how to deal with this? And I'm telling you, a million verses will pop up. So we got to be willing to make the changes that God shows us to make, but we've got to get in his word first. And we've got to let him be Lord everywhere in our lives and not just at church on Sundays. And uh, we've got to do like it says in Proverbs 3 and verse 6, acknowledge him in everything, in all our ways, and he will direct our paths. And if you don't have a devotional book, I would encourage you to get one of those too. You know, it's, I, I use one every day, every morning. Uh, Jesus Calling is the name of one. It's a really good one, and I know they sell that one at Walmart. So it'd be easy to find. Jesus Calling. So get in God's Word and seek Him, and He will be right there with you. But it all starts with surrendering your life to Christ and giving Him control. It's an action. You know, your way, Lord, not mine. But we got to be willing to change. Like I said, if we don't change anything, nothing changes. we got to be willing to stand for our faith at home. Uh, you know, don't be fearful of other people, even people you live with. I don't know why, but it seems like the hardest thing for people to do is to talk about God and to talk about Jesus with the people in their own homes. And uh, that's not the way God designed it. You know, not, don't allow things in our homes that we know shouldn't be there. Even if it is going to offend somebody else, we have to obey God rather than men, it says in the book of Acts. So we need to make sure we're in the kingdom of God in our homes, in our personal lives, at work, uh, in all our relationships. He's got to be king everywhere or he's not king at all. And like I keep telling you, this is not popular preaching, but it's the truth that will lead you to life if you'll do these things. Uh, you know, like Josh said this Sunday, we're not here to, to just play church and go through the motions. We're here to, to actually hopefully get you into a relationship with Jesus Christ so you can have the life that you're looking for and have the new beginning and the evidence of it. But that's our homework this week. If, if you're not reading the Bible every day, I encourage you to do that. You know, God's word says, seek him and he will 
He'll be right there. He's a rewarder of those that seek him. But if you haven't surrendered your life to Christ, that's where it starts. And uh, when you do that, truly do that, you will receive the Holy Spirit, and he will help you understand the Scriptures. But if you haven't done that, I always want to give you an opportunity to do that. In Romans chapter 10, verses 9 and 10, it gives us an explanation of how to do that. It says, if you'll confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. And uh, I always want to share verse 13 with you too. It says, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So it's really simple. To give your life to Christ. We just have to make that decision in our hearts. Uh, we have to say your will, not mine, Lord. And not just say that, but actually do it. You know, actually be obedient to God from that point on. We can't fool God. You know, I see a lot of people, they come to church, but their lives don't change at all. And uh, the change comes after we truly surrender to God. I called myself a Christian for years, but I hadn't truly surrendered to Christ. I went through those motions of trying to look godly and act godly, but when I got home, I was the same old me. But I'm here to tell you, when you truly mean it and you surrender your life to God, you do change. And uh, he puts his spirit in you, and all you got to do is be obedient to it, and you'll start living that new life. And I always try to tell you, too, that nobody is too far gone it don't matter what you've done in your past uh, Romans chapter 5 and verse 8 says we're all considered sinners in God's eyes but God commended his love towards us and that while we were yet sinners that's when Christ died for us you know I always like to throw this in there I've, I heard all my life you need to get it together and start going to church it don't work that way that's just as backwards as what we've been talking about you surrender your life to Christ, and he'll help you get it together. We, if we could get it together ourselves, we would do it without God, and we wouldn't need God. So it don't matter what your past looks like. Just come to God as you are and uh, invite him into your heart, and He will. you will be saved. God, like we just read in verse 13, he don't turn anybody away. It says, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So that's our homework for tonight. Uh, do like Paul said. Really examine yourselves. You know, am I in the faith? Or are there things in my life I need to surrender to God? And uh, if you're not reading God's Word, get one of those Jesus Calling devotionals at Walmart and start reading it every day. Get in the Word and God will start speaking to you and He'll start giving you direction and guidance. And uh, you can start moving forward in your relationship with God. But thank you all for coming out. That was the message God gave me tonight. I hope that really helps somebody. Uh, it helps me. I can't imagine going a whole day without reading God's Word. You know, I would be completely lost. I wouldn't know which way to go. But uh, thank you all for coming out. Let me pray for us, and we will be dismissed. Father, thank you for the message. And thank you, Lord, for uh, giving me the courage and the boldness to get up here and preach it. I pray, Father, that it, I know your word does not return void. And I just pray, Lord, that hearts would be softened and uh, that pride would be dropped, Lord, and that people would come to you and ask you for your help, Lord, and to truly humble themselves before you and be willing to make the changes that we need to make, Lord, to become the men and the women of God you've called us to be and uh, Lord I just pray that people would come to you with pure hearts and uh, ask you to come into their lives God so that they can experience being born again and receiving your Holy Spirit and Father we just ask all these things in the mighty name of Jesus Amen <laughs>